The Jack Benny Program, transcribed, presented by Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. When April showers start to fall, I never do complain. With better tasting Lucky Strike, I sing right in the rain. And you'll sing for joy, cause Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. I've made smoking tests galore, and each time I agree, no smoke tastes like a Lucky Strike plus LSMFT. You'll agree too, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Be happy, go Lucky, be happy, go Lucky Strike, be happy, go Lucky, go Lucky Strike today. Friends, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. And here's the reason. Fine tobacco and only fine tobacco always gives you the enjoyment of a better tasting cigarette. And LSMFT, Lucky Strike, means fine tobacco. Tobacco that smokes smooth and mild, that gives you better taste with every puff. And what's more, every Lucky you light is guaranteed. Yes, of all the major brands, Lucky Strike and Lucky Strike alone has an unconditional guarantee right on the pack. So for everything you want in a cigarette, for complete smoking enjoyment, be happy, go lucky, make your next carton Lucky Strike. You'll agree, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Remember, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, the Sportsman Quartet, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, spring is here, but to prove to you that the weather in California is always warm and sunny, we bring you one of our satisfied residents. <laughs> ah, listen to that little birdie singing. <laughs> anyway, it's spring, so let's go out to Jack Benny's house in Beverly Hills where we find Rochester cleaning the house. <coughs> Darn this dust. <coughs> Dog darn, I wish Mr. Benny would buy a bag for this vacuum cleaner. My pockets are full. <laughs> this is awful. Hey, I didn't turn the cleaner off. Uh-oh, the comas must have pulled out the plug. <laughs> well, I was finished anyway. Oh, hello, boss. Hello, Rochester. Say, you really got the house clean. Thanks. I was just out in the yard looking at the swimming pool. In Rochester, I think tomorrow you can turn the water on and fill it. But, boss, I thought you said... I know, but if it hasn't rained by this time, it's not going. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I think that... I'll get it, Rochester. Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. Say, you're kind of early. We're not supposed to leave for the circus for nearly an hour. I know, Jack, but it's such a beautiful day, I left the house early and walked over. Oh. And as I came down Sunset Boulevard, some fresh guy pulled up to the curb and offered me a ride. No. Yeah, he thought he was smart just because he had a new Cadillac convertible. Yeah. Gee, it was windy with the top down. <laughs> Mary, you mean that you accepted a ride from a total stranger? Why, that's... Oh, for heaven's sake, Jack, I'm kidding. Kidding? Certainly. You don't think I'm the type of girl who lets herself get picked up by any guy in an auto? I don't know. That's how you met me. <laughs> Say, Mary... I'll get a laugh some way. Say, Mary... Mary, what's, uh... Say, Mary, what's... 
What's that in your hand, huh? Oh, it's a letter from Mama. I thought you'd want to see it. A letter from your mother, eh? Well, what does nobody's friend Irma have to say? <laughs> I'll read it to you. <clears throat> <clears throat> My darling daughter, Mary. We are all very glad that you're over your five weeks illness and are appearing on Jack's program again. But it must be discouraging to go from unemployment insurance back to your regular salary. <laughs> There's not enough difference to talk about. <laughs> Your sister, Babe, has been home for a couple of weeks, and frankly, she's a little conceited because she replaced you on Jack's program. Now she wants them to put a star on her locker at the slaughterhouse. <laughs> Wait a minute, Mary. Babe is now working in a slaughterhouse? Yes, she's known as Hit Him in the Head Livingston. <laughs> But Mary... Oh, Jack, let me finish the letter, please. All right, go ahead, kid. <laughs> Last night we went... To... You don't generally get this much to do, you know. Go ahead. <laughs> Last night we went to a going-away party for your cousin Melvin. It was a nice affair, but I think it was silly of Melvin to put on a sailor suit just because you're sending him up the river. <laughs> Babe works in a slaughterhouse? <laughs> you know, Mary, your mother writes such a funny letter. Excuse me. Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. I'm sorry I'm late. You're not late. You're early. I am? Yes. Gee, this daylight saving time has got me confused. <laughs> daylight saving time? Dennis, you're not supposed to turn your watch ahead till next Sunday. I forgot to turn it back from last year. <laughs> Well, then you're really late. Yeah, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Dennis, you're starting to confuse me already. Now, do me a favor, will you? Go out, walk around the block, and come back, come back in again. Okay, goodbye. Uh, who was that, Jack? It was Dennis. He came in to wish me a Merry Christmas. What? I don't know. He gets me mixed up, too. I told him to walk around the block. Well, isn't he going to the circus with us? Yes, the whole gang's going, and I'm also taking some boys from the Beverly Hills Beavers. I better tell Rochester what time I'll be home. Rochester? Yes, boss? I'll be home about 6 o'clock for dinner, so don't forget to go to the market. I've already been to the market, boss. Oh, what did you buy? I gave you $5. Let me see. I bought 10 pounds of potatoes, 3 pounds of butter, 2 pounds of hamburger... A prime rib roast, eight pork chops, three pounds of bacon, a leg of lamb, and a sirloin steak. Oh, good, good. Where's the change? <laughs> change? Oh, did that all come to five dollars? Oh, no, boss. The five dollars ran out after the hamburger. <laughs> Oh, well, how'd you get him to give you the pork chops, the bacon, the egg, the leg of lamb, and the sirloin steak? I signed a contract. A contract with a butcher shop? Yeah, you're appearing there tonight. <laughs> what? And if you make good, I can book you at the Van Nuys a and <laughs> Rochester, don't go booking me for personal appearances. I've got an agent for that. Why do you think I pay him 9%? <laughs> Now, look, I want you... I'll get it. Hello? It's me. I'm lost. <laughs> oh, Dennis, don't be ridiculous. Where are you now? I'm doing my Christmas shopping. Now, cut that out. And if you want to go to the circus with us, you better get back here right away. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye. Silly kid. I wonder what he bought for me. <laughs> oh, well. I say, Mr. Benning... What is it, Rochester? After I serve dinner, can I have the rest of the evening off? Why? We're having a big party on Central Avenue for my friend Jerome, who got drafted. Well, certainly you... Wait a minute, Rochester. Your friend Jerome was drafted six months ago, and he's overseas now. Yeah, it's a shame he's gonna miss the party. <laughs> well, you can go, but don't stay out all... Oh, that must be Phil. He's going to the circus with us. Hello, Mr. Benny. Dennis. <laughs> Dennis. How 
did you get here so soon? Well, as soon as now, I now got... Now, hold it, Dad. <laughs> oh, I don't want to get into another routine. And there's something else I want to tell you. Yeah, what? Now, look, at Mary's in the living room. Now, you know she was sick for several weeks. Uh-huh. Right now, she's feeling fine, so don't start any of your silly talk with her. I don't want her to have any trouble. Now, when you see her, just say hello. That's all. Just hello. Yes, sir. Jack, what took you so... Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello. Are you going to the circus with us? Hello. <laughs> Look, Dennis, you can say more than that. I can? Yes. Kiss me, Livy. Now, stop! <laughs> Dennis Dennis, look Look at me You want to hear the song I'm going to do on the program? That's exactly what I want Now let's have it Okay Dennis, very good. Oh, it's not bad for a silly kid who has two shows, does personal appearances, and is now making a picture. <laughs> Dennis, you're, uh, you're making a picture? Yeah, 20th Century Fox. Gee, you have your own show, personal appearances, and now you're making a picture. When he starts playing meat markets, he'll be as big as you are. <laughs> Mary, how did you know? I bought a pound of liver and you were in the coming attractions. <laughs> Imagine getting the publicity out already. Hello? Hello, is this you, Jackson? Yes, Phil, are you going to the circus with us? Yeah, Jackson, but you better go on ahead because I'm going to be late. Late? Why? I've been rehearsing my band for a concert tour and it took longer than I figured. Why, what happened? We ran out of ice. <laughs> Yeah, whoever has an eight-bar rest mixes them. Oh, for heaven's sake. 
Anyway, Jackson, you go on without me. I'll meet you at the circus. Okay, are you going to bring any of your, as it says on the payroll, musicians? <laughs> hmm? <laughs> yeah, Jackson, they'll all be there. Well, except uh, Sammy, my drummer, he hates circuses. Sammy hates circuses? Why? He used to work in one. He was the guy who put his head in the lion's mouth. <laughs> no. Why'd he give it up? He didn't give it up. The lion quit. <laughs> oh, well, I don't blame the lion. Sammy's head is the size of a watermelon. <laughs> of course, his isn't ripe yet. You're so right. I plugged it yesterday. <laughs> well, Phil, the next time you... There's someone at the door. I better say goodbye. So long, Jackson. I'll see you at the circus. Okay. What a day. The door, the phone, the phone, the door. Oh. Oh, I wasn't expecting you, Mr. Collins. Uh, Mr. Benny, the Department of Internal Revenue suggested that we visit you once more. Uh, you remember my assistant, Herbert Thompson? Yes, yes. How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> hmm. Mr. Benny, we hate to bother you again, and the only reason we continue to do so is because we're trying to help you. I know, I know. <laughs> now, uh, you stated, Mr. Benny, you stated that you made $375,000 last year. Yeah. And we're willing to assume that all you spent for entertainment was $17. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But now we've gone into your tax return further, and we feel there are other places you didn't take deductions you were entitled to. Really? Yes, yes, we noticed, we noticed you prepared your income tax return yourself. Now, when it comes to filling out a return as complicated as yours, you're entitled to the services of an expert accountant a person who knows more about money matters than you do. <laughs> Name one. <laughs> well, offhand, that would be difficult. Yeah. Uh, now, Mr. Benny, believe me, we're trying to help you. I know, I know. <laughs> now, you listed an item of a $50,000 loan with a California bank. That's right, the, the California bank. Well, you know you can deduct the interest you pay on that loan. Oh, no, I can't. You see, I loaned it to them. <laughs> oh. Now, will there be anything else, gentlemen? No, I guess not. Come on, Herb, let's go back to the sanitarium and work on it some more. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Benny. Goodbye, gentlemen. Goodbye. Gee, but those two fellas are nice to me. Oh, Jack. Yes, Mary. The boys from the Beverly Hills Beavers are here. They came in the back way. Oh. Hello, boys. Hello, Mr. Benny. Hi, Mr. Benny. We're all ready to go. Yeah, let's go to the circus. All right, well... Hey, wait a minute, boys. Where's Stevie? He was supposed to come with us, too. He couldn't come. His mother's in the hospital. Oh, and Stevie's going to visit his mother today? No, they won't let him see her yet. Why, has she got something contagious? I don't think so. She's going to have a baby. <laughs> oh, oh. That's what makes me think parents are so unfair. Well, what do you mean, unfair? Well, last summer, Stevie brought home a dog, and his mother and father wouldn't let him have it because he didn't ask their permission. Yeah, and now they're having a baby, and they didn't ask Stevie nothing about it. <laughs> Well, maybe we better drop the subject. Yeah. I can explain it, boys. You Dennis, shut up! up. <laughs> now, come on. Come on, we're all going to the circus. <laughs> Come on, kids, let's all stick close together. I don't want anybody getting lost in the crowd. I'm holding Mrs. Livingston's hand. Good. 
And I'm holding Dennis Day's hand. Fine. And I'm holding your hand, Dawa Day. <laughs> yeah, don't be funny. Hiya, 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 hiya. The world's greatest attractions ever assembled in one place. Now, folks, we have Jojo the dog face boy. Beatrice, the marinated mermaid. Half herring, half sour cream. <laughs> And as an extra added attraction, we have the world's only India rubber man with white sidewall legs. <laughs> yes, sir, the greatest freaks on earth. Gosh. Mr. Benny, can we go in? I guess so. Oh, mister, about the freak show. Yes, sir, would you like a ticket or a contract? <laughs> <laughs> All right, step right up. Now, look, look see, mister. Get away from me, bump your bother me. <laughs> what? Hit him, Mr. Benny. Quiet. Now, come on, kids. Hey, here's another sideshow. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Step right in and see the most amazing sights in the history of show business. On the inside, you'll see Matilda, the fat lady. 790 pounds of bounce and blubber. <laughs> and now, I want to call your attention to my colleague who will present the free show right here on the outside. Good, good. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, here is the free show. Oh, look, Mary, it's Don. Hey, Don, Don. Get away from me, bud, you bother me. <laughs> huh? And now, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to present the eighth wonder of the world, the only singing monkeys in captivity. Take it, champs. <laughs> Said the monkey to the chimp. All night long they chatter away. All day long they were happy and gay, swinging and singing in a honky tonky way. Dabba means luckies, we love you. Dabba in monkey talk means you will love them too. They're a big attraction anywhere, a circus or the county fair. There's nothing quite like popping on a monkey's tongue. And there's no monkey shine when they see you puffing away on a lucky, happy and gay. Smoking, yes, yeah, smoking, this is what they have to say. Means <laughs> LSMFT. In any talk means that's a smoke for me. We're not monkeys, that you know. We're Jack Squartet and me the dough. the big free outside exhibition. But don't go away. Look here, look here, look here. I call your attention to this lady here, Salome, the exotic dancer of the Orient. She'll give her a full and complete dance on the inside. The dance which caused sultans to give up their harems, rajas to fight duels. She shimmies and she shakes. Come on, kid, let's go over to the merry-go-round. Are you kidding? <laughs> I think Mr. Benny is right. Let's go to the merry-go-round. Come on, everybody. Hey, where's Dennis? I don't know. I haven't seen him. Oh, here he comes now. For heaven's sakes, Dennis, where have you been? Oh, I've been going through the tunnel of love. <laughs> I don't know why everybody raves about it. It's awful. What's so bad about the tunnel of love? Oh, it's dark in there and lonesome, and you get your clothes all wet. You got your clothes all wet? Why, did the boat leak? Oh, boat! <laughs> Jackson. Hey, Jackson, let's go see the wild animals. Yeah, yeah. Okay, come on, kid. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to call your attention to Rex. Rex, the king of the jungle, the most ferocious lion in captivity. <laughs> Gee. <laughs> He must have a cold. He sneezed when he was a bird, too. <laughs> oh, well. And now, now we would like to call your attention to the world's most perfectly trained seal. 
Friends, this extraordinary seal will now demonstrate his musical talent by playing a Yankee Doodle on this horn. <laughs> Say, Phil, how about... I tried to get him from my band, but he ain't union. <laughs> oh. Anyway, how would a seal look sitting up there with my band? Better than what you've got. Oh. <laughs> and it won't look so ridiculous when you throw them a fish. <laughs> Believe me. And now, friends, if you watch the center ring closely, we'll go on with the performance. It's been exciting here at the circus. Yeah, I'll say it was. And now, friends, before concluding today's performance, I'd like to present a final extra added attraction. In the middle of the center ring, we have the most ferocious gorilla in captivity. <laughs> tonight, friends, tonight, the management of this circus will offer this sum of $500 to anyone who will wrestle with this gorilla. Is there a volunteer? <laughs> think of it, friends, think of it. $500 to anyone who will come up and wrestle with this gorilla. I wish Babe were here. <laughs> babe? Our friends, this is your last chance, your last chance to anyone. Anyone who will wrestle this gorilla, I offer $500. Well... Hey, Jackson, come back, kid. <laughs> Wait for me, kids. They shouldn't take long. Jack! Jack! <laughs> All right, gorilla, put up your dupe. <laughs> take it easy. I got a cold. <laughs> I know, but we got to make it look good. Okay, but don't pull the fur on my lip. That's real. <laughs> I will. Come on, let's wrestle. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one tiny burning ember from a campfire, a lighted and discarded match or cigarette left to smolder or thrown from a car window can cause a destructive forest fire. So no matter where you go, do your part to prevent forest fires that destroy millions of acres of timberland, cripple watersheds, and blast our natural resources that are so urgently needed now. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. Thank you. In just a moment. And now, friends, let's visit some folks who are doing their spring planting. I've got my hoe, I've got my rake, I guess I'm really set. I've even got a better tasting Lucky cigarette. Hmm, you bet. Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. I planted peas and beans and corn, but oh, my aching back. Thank goodness for the mild, rich taste inside my Lucky pack. Try them, you'll agree. Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Friends, be happy, go lucky has a really important meaning for you because Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Yes, every Lucky you light always gives you mildness, smoothness, far better taste than any other cigarette you've ever smoked. And here's why. Fine tobacco, and only fine tobacco can give you the enjoyment of a better-tasting cigarette. And LSMFT, Lucky Strike, means fine tobacco. So for complete smoking enjoyment, be happy, go lucky. Make your next carton Lucky Strike. You'll find Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Remember, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Gee, Jack, I never realized you were that brave. Imagine wrestling a gorilla. And you threw him in only 30 seconds. You knocked him flat. And he didn't even hurt you. Yeah, but I think I caught his cold. <laughs> Good night, folks. Be sure to hear Dennis Day in the day in the life of Dennis Day. Stay tuned for the Amos and Andy show, which follows immediately. The Jack Benny program is heard by our armed forces overseas through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service.